Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade and the look at the November sales of Flesh and Blood off of TCG Player. Of course, I've updated this tool now, so we have some new things to look at. Cumulative spend here, and I set the number of months that you can put on a date plot. So right now, we can just look at November. We can see, oh, about $18,000 for Welcome to Wraith sales and a little under 16,000 for Arcane Rising and all the way down about 9,000 for Crucible of War. So that's interesting, but if we want, we can pull out here to three months and we can see a longer trend of how those things are going. And you can almost see, maybe we can squint and pretend that there's a slight acceleration in the pace of money being spent on these products out here. And of course, the cool thing about cumulative spend is that it's independent of box type. It normalizes across products. And it's simply how much money is being thrown into these things. And so we can see over the last three months, almost 700 boxes of Welcome to Wraith got gobbled up off the market, a little under 300 of Crucible of War. Of course, I still stand by what I've said for a long time, which is I think there's a lot less Crucible of War in existence than we appreciate. And a few, little over 100 boxes of Monarch First Edition sold on Black Friday. And you can see how much the dollar value pace of sales of uh, Monarch First Edition is above the Monarch Unlimited and really no change in the rate of sales just on a cash basis or a box basis of Monarch Unlimited in the last several months. So very, very steady, but people come in and just quietly scoop up those first edition boxes. Like I said, over 100 on Black Friday. So if we look at the last three months of Tales of Aria, first edition, versus unlimited the same kind of thing you can kind of see a little upwards trending here a little bit of an acceleration in terms of boxes and dollars and all these prices have been pretty steady so we'll take history pack and everfest first edition and of course history pack somewhat unloved only sold oh that's probably about 30 boxes on black friday not really a lot so let's zoom in one month and we'll look at Dynasty and Uprising. And we can see Dynasty here, the blue line. Very, very good performance. This was something we were a little hesitant about last month because Dynasty was not in full release when I did the video for October sales. Now it came into full release, I believe November 8th was the date. And we can see that it definitely picked up topped out a bit over $80,000 in sales and nearly a thousand boxes just during November. So there had been a few boxes back there and just look how stable these prices are. Let me, let me just show dynasty on here to really emphasize this. This spread here on the vertical axis is a dollar and 20 cents and it stayed between there the entire month. So you really have to give James White and legend story studios credit about how they have uh, controlled the prices by uh, keeping the amount of product and the print runs and the distribution networks all in line. And man, it really shows. So here's something interesting we can look at. You just throw everything on a plot together and you say, well, where was the money spent this month? Overwhelmingly, it was people buying the new product. And of course, this is great for the long-term health of the game. It means that there are people coming in, buying up the new product to play with it. And the investor dollars are down there lower on the plot, but they are absolutely dwarfed by people coming in and buying up the new thing. If it were just investors, you would expect to see the oldest products being scooped up as they're the ones that well, basically, there's more nostalgia around them. There's more limited supply. There's more certainty about their future. So all of these data look really good. Prices were very stable over the course of the month. And I think if I take Dynasty off of here, I can compare with the previous month. We'll stretch this plot out to two months. Yeah, there we go. And so you can see just how flat prices have been. That's really good. Um, rising here, of course. Arcane Rising is the one with rising prices. Really interesting price action on that. It went up about $30 over the course of the month. And you can definitely see the amount for sale at any time on TCG Player is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking over time. In fact, one day I checked it 
during November, it was about seven boxes were for sale. Now, I don't put a lot of stock in that at, in terms of predictive power, but it is interesting to see just how little of it is out there on the market now, especially compared to something like the Welcome to Wraith Unlimited boxes where there are still plenty. And something I was thinking about a couple days ago is you really should not discount the effect of disillusioned magic players coming over to flesh and blood, uh, changing games at least temporarily, and the effect that things like 55 and 60 and 70 dollar booster boxes will do when somebody wants to come over because they're irritated at how expensive magic has gotten and how bad the value proposition for most players is right now now i know those flesh and blood boxes are smaller they have fewer cards in them and the price per card is comparable or even more but it's the psychological thing of getting a whole booster box to open and getting it for 55 60 70 dollars depending on the particular product so, you know, I had said at the end of the video last month that the thing we were really going to look for was Dynasty's performance, and I think it really came through, and that's a very, very good sign for the future. Nearly a 1,000 boxes sold just on TCG Player this month. So let me know what you guys think, what you'd like to see in the future, other ideas you have for analyses. Otherwise, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.